In this tutorial, I'm going to introduce you to the concept of pipes, uh, how to create them, and uh, what they can do in Neuronic 2 applications. Now the app I have on screen here is one I developed just a few days ago. Uh, I decided to do a little challenge with Ionic 2. Uh, I wanted to see how quickly I could build out an entire application, uh, one that's ready to be submitted to the App Store using Ionic 2. Uh, so I started building this and it took me about three hours and 57 minutes to complete. And as part of this project, uh, it involves tracking time, how much time is being spent uh, on a project. And so you can see right now this writing project is currently being timed. The, the number just underneath uh, writing there is uh, incrementing by one second uh, every second. And so that's the way that time is stored in this project. Uh, each project just has an amount of seconds stored to represent how long that has been uh, timed for. Now there's a pretty obvious problem here and that's one that we have all these ugly uh, decimal points on the end and the other problem is that it's not really useful to know that I've spent 1056 seconds uh, working on a project or uh, 50,372 seconds. Uh, as humans we prefer to think of things in hours, minutes and seconds instead. And so this is where a pipe can come in really handy. Storing seconds uh, in this project made, made it easier to program. Uh, it works for a lot of things that uh, I need to code, but it's not readable. Uh, so what a pipe can do is it can take the format that it is currently in, and before we render out those seconds on the screen to the user, we can run that data through a pipe, and that pipe will modify that in some way and display that instead. So it's kind of like you're just pumping your data through this little little machine that does something to it and then it spits it back out again. And so what we're going to do is create a pipe that will take these uh, seconds as input and then it's going to convert it into a nice string that reads as something like 3 hours, 23 minutes, 24 seconds. And so I'm just going to use this project as an example to demonstrate that. So I've already done this, so what I've done is I've gone back and deleted this pipe and we're going to um, build it. So if I jump into the project now, uh, you'll see over here uh, under the pipes folder, I have already have the pipe generated. Uh, to generate your own pipe, you can either just copy out the format that's here and put it in a pipes um, folder, or you can use the Ionic command line to generate it for you. Uh, so if I just stop serving this for a second, I could just run Ionic G pipe and then the name of my pipe. Uh, so this would be hours, minutes, seconds, and then that will generate the, the pipe for you. Once you do have the pipe added to your application, uh, you also need to make sure that it's added to the uh, app.module.ts file. So you'll need to come into here and just make sure that you import it and then add it as a declaration. Uh, once you've done that, you'll be able to use it anywhere in your project. Okay, so let's jump back into the pipe now and start thinking about how we need to implement this. Uh, so you'll see a pipe looks very similar to a normal component that you'll build but with a few key differences. So we have a name uh, property here that we're setting to hours, minutes, seconds and this is going to be the name that we're going to use to invoke this pipe. So if I just quickly jump into the home page template here, this is where those seconds are being rendered out to the screen currently. And so the way a pipe works is we use this little pipe character and then we supply the name of the pipe that we want to use. So I'd write hours, minutes, seconds uh, because that is what I'm using as the name here. The other difference we have is that we don't have a, a constructor or anything like that, we just have a transform function and this function does exactly what it sounds like. It's going to take in that uh, value, the, the seconds that we pass into it, and it's going to transform it. And so whatever gets returned from this transform function, so if I just return hello, that is what is going to be displayed in the template. So right now this is just going to take in the seconds and that's going to be passed through as the value and then it's just returning hello. So no matter what we have uh, in here, that's always just going to say hello now in the template. So to see if that actually is the case, let's actually try it or we'll save that. And we'll save this as well and we'll see what happens. Okay, so you can see now that 
uh, instead of the seconds we have hello being displayed. Now, of course we don't want to do that uh, so we're going to modify this transform function to do uh, something a little bit more interesting than that uh, but before we do that uh, you also notice we have this args uh, parameter here too and it also has a question mark next to it uh, so the question mark means that uh, it's an optional parameter we don't need to supply that if we don't want to uh, but we can also supply additional arguments into this pipe to control what we do uh, how we then transform the data. So in our initial example I'm not going to use args, uh, the arguments here, but I will come back afterwards and we'll go through an example uh, using some arguments. So what we want to do now is use that value and convert it into a, uh, a string that says 3 hours 23 minutes uh, 4 seconds or something like that. So to do that I'm just going to calculate each of those individually. Uh, so I can calculate uh, how many minutes are in those seconds uh, by doing the uh, value which will be the seconds and we want to uh, divide that by 60 and that will give us our minutes uh, but as well as that I also want to um, just do math.floor to round that down and then I can work out uh, the hours by doing a similar thing again but this time we want to divide the uh, minutes by 60 to get our hours. And then finally we can get our seconds by again doing uh, math.floor, uh, but this time we're going to use the original seconds value, uh, which is just value, and we're going to use the modulus op uh, operator, and that's going to give us the remainder. So when we divide uh, value, which is the seconds, by 60, it'll give us the remainder of that rather than uh, the uh, divided amount. So if it was uh, 70 seconds, we divide that by 60, uh, which leaves 10 left over. So that means uh, there is 10 seconds. And so if you just uh, think about that uh, for a second, if you, do, if you did have 70 seconds, that is clearly one minute, 10 seconds. Uh, so by getting the remainder from dividing by 60, it's going to accurately give us the amount of seconds we want once the minutes and the hours have been taken into account. So now we have uh, the minutes, hours, and seconds, and uh, that represents the amount of seconds we had, but in the format we want. So now what we need to do is return that by creating a string that uses those. So what I'm going to do here is just return a string we create, and I might actually just create it separately here. So we'll say let string, uh, I'll call it time string to be a little bit more accurate. So I want to do the hours, and then I want to add a string onto the end of that to indicate that that is the hours, and then we'll do the minutes, and we'll add mins onto that, and then the seconds, and we'll just add sex onto the end of that. So now I can return that time string, and since we are now, uh, we've got the seconds from the project there, we're running it through this pipe, so that's going to run the data through that pipe and then display it here. So hopefully now we should have uh, the time in the format that we want. So it looks like we got uh, some kind of error. Uh, we are missing, let's see, oh, we're missing the um, add operator just here. So if I save that again and retry, hopefully it should work now. Okay, cool. So it looks like it's working. Uh, we have 0 hours, 17 minutes, 37 seconds there. Uh, and here we got 12 minutes, 55 seconds, and it's counting up. And uh, we'll just see if that ticks over to 13 minutes. And it does. Okay, so that all looks like it's working fine now. Uh, so now we've got our data being displayed nicely uh, in a human readable format. But as I mentioned before, we can also use some arguments to further uh, to further define what we want our pipe to do. And so what we could do is say in here, by using this pipe, that's going to let us display that data in that format of hours, minutes, seconds. Let's say we want to make this a little bit more configurable. So maybe instead of just using that one format, maybe we want, we want to allow uh, the developer to specify 
which of those three they want to display. So maybe they don't want to display the seconds, they just want to display the hours and the minutes. Or maybe they just want to display only the hours. So to add support for that, we can pass in some arguments into the pipe from within the template. So what I'm going to do is just add a colon here, and then I'm going to pass in an object to that pipe. And in that object, I'm going to have three properties uh, that represent the hours, minutes, and the seconds. So I'm going to say hours, true, minutes, true, seconds, false. So what I'm saying is I want this pipe to display the hours and the minutes, but not the seconds. So now I'm going to have to come back into here and add support for that functionality. So now that we're passing in that argument there, we're going to be able to grab that using args. And so we just need to modify this string uh, based on what arguments are passed in. So rather than just concatenating this whole time string here all at once, I'm going to instead get rid of that and just start off with an empty string. And then I'm going to check the value of the arguments uh, of the, the properties in the object that's passed in to determine whether or not I should add uh, specific sections to that string. So I can check uh, if we want to display hours by doing args.hours because that's accessing the uh, the hours property in the object we passed in and so I can just add a bunch of if conditions here uh, to determine whether or not I want to add it to the string uh, but rather than creating uh, three different if blocks I'm just going to use the ternary operator here and uh, so if you're not familiar with that essentially we can use this format we had a question mark so we're checking this value, and if that uh, evaluates to true, uh, we will do whatever is here. Uh, but if it is uh, false, then we do whatever's here. The ternary operator essentially says, if this, uh, do this, else, do that. It's just a, a shorter and neater way of writing it. Uh, usually I wouldn't use this, but uh, I think it's just going to look a, quite a bit neater in this case. So what I'm going to do is, uh, so if that is true, args.hours is true, I'm going to add the hours to the time string. I can do time string plus equals to concatenate it onto the current string. I'll just add hours and then the string at the end of that, so hours. And then we're also going to have to uh, specify that else condition, otherwise this won't work properly. So. Uh, we just need to add a true or something on to the end there so that uh, it's not going to fail. Now we can do the same for the minutes. So we'll just do time string, uh, which now will have had that added to it uh, if necessary. Do time string plus equals uh, minutes plus mins. And for the seconds as well time string plus equals seconds plus six and set that to true okay so hopefully this should work now uh, so we'll save that and jump back into the browser now yeah, it looks like something's failing hopefully that goes away okay uh, and we now just have zero hours 17 minutes uh, with the spacing messed up though let's just put some spaces on the end there. So I'll try that again. Okay, so now it's 0 hours, 17 minutes, uh, with no seconds being displayed. Uh, as that eventually ticks over to another minute, we'll see this update. I don't know when that's going to happen, so I'm not going to wait around for it. Um, but if we jump into here again, um, we then decide we want to bring those seconds back. We just change that to true. Come in here and it should all display again. Cool, so we got the seconds back now, and then maybe we don't want to display uh, the minutes or the seconds, so we just set those to false, refresh it, and now we have just the hours displaying. So I think this is a particularly good uh, example of uh, where a pipe can come in useful, uh, but there is a ton of different ways you could use them, um, but in general you're going to be using them to display data to the user uh, in, a, in a more user-readable format. So the general idea with pipes is that you take some data, uh, you run it through a pipe, you do something to that data, and something comes out the other end. And that is what you are actually displaying to the user.
Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, if you want to check out the full code for this uh, perma timer application, uh, I will have just released a, a tutorial on that and the code is also available on GitHub. So I'll link to that and you can check it out if you want. I uh, hope you have some fun using pipes in your applications and I'll see you in the next one.